answer is, to my knowledge, they would, whether it was a copy of a paid invoice. Typically, she would have, I believe, stamped it paid, check number date. And then the fall, then every month or so, Metro Sheet Metal would send a statement to those customers. Answer, I don't know. Like I said, I was more the hands-on fabrication. But you recognize that as one of the Metro Sheet Metal's statements. Answer, that's what it says. There was a question about some of the content, the final balance that was due to Fed Metro Sheet Metal. It's an objection that the foundation overruled and was allowed to give that answer. The amount due was $3,450. a discussion about payments and he received an envelope of checks from Merit that were checks from McStay but he didn't look in the envelope and didn't see what the checks were. There's an objection that the statement indicates that Metro Sheet Metal billed $14,700 for the Paul Mitchell job. Objection lack of foundation was sustained. And then question, the uh, statement also reflects two payments that were made to Metro Sheet Metal and with the check numbers. Objection, lack of foundation sustained. And that's the end of the discussion of Exhibit 740. Then we go to some chats. Is that one of the checks that Mr. Merritt gave to you as payment? Uh, he says, again, uh, they were in an envelope. I didn't look at them, so no. And he actually has been shown carbon copies of the check rather than the actual check. Objection to those who are sustained. And Mr. McGee indicates he established a foundation for Exhibit 740 at the witness stand. Then counsel approached. Court reviews Exhibit 740. And there's a discussion about the checks. The check noted on the statement is the check number on the carbon copy that is being asked about. Discussion about what's shown on Exhibit 740 and the checks. The court says, well, 
The problem is that Exhibit 740 is a statement that indicates the particular check and a particular amount was received. If the witness indicates, yes, I'm familiar with the accounting, and yes, I can verify that's an accurate record, that's fine. But he's indicating that he doesn't know that. That would be Carmen's job. More discussion, the court says, so Exhibit 740, the purpose of that is to say this is a business record of Metro Sheet Metal, which demonstrates a particular check in a particular amount where it's received by Metro Sheet Metal from Joseph McStay. This witness doesn't have the foundation to lay the foundation that this is a business record which shows that. All he can do is say, yeah, looks like a statement from Metro Sheet Metal. He can read what's on the statement. There's more discussion. Mr. McGee argues that he identified it as a statement, and that's all that's necessary. The what knowledge he does or doesn't have goes to weight, not admissibility. court sustain the objection to exhibit 740 as lack of foundation. There is no foundation that this witness can lay an adequate foundation that this is an accurate business record that was prepared in normal course of the business. You can show him the checks or the carbon copies of the checks to see if he recalls obtaining those from Merrick. And then we 
took our weekend recess. So the court sustained the objection to Exhibit 740, its lack of foundation. The court did allow one item of testimony about it that the there was an amount due of $3,450, I think it was. So, with regard then to So on box number eight, Charles Merrick pays $4,100 to Metro Sheet Metal to cover part of remaining balance on invoice. That's referring to the statement, Metro Sheet Metal statement of 3 1 That's stating as a fact that forty nine hundred was paid to Metro Sheet Metal and that's based solely on that, that Metro Sheet Metal received that forty nine hundred is based solely on uh, exhibit seven forty, which the court sustained the objection to. So I don't think the expert can refer to that. So I'll sustain the objection to uh, box 8 as well as box 9 and then box 10. Box 10 is Charles Merritt withdraws $3,600 on 3 8 10. What's wrong with that? Well, they're proposing that that goes to Paul Mitchell, and there's no evidence that it did. Just because he makes a cash withdrawal of $3,600, how in the world are we tying that to the Paul Mitchell job? The document doesn't exhibit 1123 doesn't say that. Well, I understand that. My objection to that is that it's just complete speculation to attribute that to the flow of money surrounding the Paul Mitchell project. did allow in the amount due. The jury's heard that that was the amount due. I'll allow Kenneth. Kenneth just saying that he withdrew, withdrew $3,600 at the Commerce Casino. And then um, with respect to number box number four, Your Honor, there's also an asterisk there that has a um, information found on Metro Sheet Metal statement. So if we could have that removed as well, because that refers to Exhibit 740 again. Same thing with the box up above it. They actually have the Metro Sheet Metal invoice referred to in there. refers to a check by Joseph and Steve. And I don't have a problem with that. It's just the reference to the invoice. Uh, box 4 is alright because it's referring to Joseph's records and bank statements which show the check. But 
box three is currently just referring to the invoice for the amount owed on Paul Mitchell. And that's based solely on the state uh, 3 1 2010 statement. Yeah, that's just the statement of what the 3 1 2010 statement is showing. So, again, that would have to be stricken. Box three. direct examination if the uh, prosecution wants to go until uh, tomorrow to begin cross-examination, uh, I would let you do that since there's a number of new exhibits. I'll let the court know. Thank you. Good morning. Sort of. <laughs> uh, record reflect we are back in session. Parties and counsel are present. All members of our jury and our alternates are present. Uh, I apologize for the delay in getting started this morning. The attorneys uh, had some issues they felt they needed to resolve before we called the next witness. It took a little bit longer than anyone thought it would. Uh, but we finally did do that, and we're ready to call our next witness. So, uh, defense may call your next witness. Thank you, Your Honor. Dennis Shogren. Full name, I'll spell it for the record. Dennis Shogren, D E N N I S S H O G R E N. Okay, we have to Thank you. Good morning, sir. Good morning. What is your uh, current occupation? I practice as a CPA in Riverside. Okay. And do you have any uh, training? to have that uh, job? <clears throat> well, um, I can back up just a little bit. I have an undergraduate degree in accounting from the State University of New York. I have a master's in business administration from Simon School of Business at the University of Rochester. And I passed the CPA exam back in 1986 and be became a licensed CPA in the state of New York then. I am also licensed currently in California, so I'm licensed in both states. Uh, how long have you been licensed in California? Um, um, five or six years, I don't remember exactly. And have you uh, been qualified as an expert in the field of forensic accounting? I have. Okay. And have you been appointed by the court uh, to administer or serve as a, a trustee or fiduciary for trusts? I have. Can you explain that? Sure. 
Um, I do quite a bit of work with in probate, and so have been court appointed as a guardian and a conservator and trust ad, um, administrator or trustee. Um, I'm also a special administrator or administrator of uh, states, all of that, um, both privately and court appointed. <laughs> And in terms of forensic accounting, what experience or what experience do you have in forensic accounting? So and if you could, I'm sorry, if you could also explain to the uh, jury uh, the uh, term forensic accounting. Sure. The uh, the simplest way for me to understand forensic is that what I do is presentable in court. So I I take. Um, financial records and um, make that um, so that I can explain what's happened um, in court. And as far as my experience with uh, forensic accounting, I most of that uh, work comes in probate and family law um, where uh, we examine um, financial statements and bank records and estates uh, and so on just to uh, determine. Um, I, I work as a neutral party to determine what the answer is so that people have uh, reliable records to work with when they're negotiating or when they're um, uh, working on splitting assets and that sort of thing. So you'd be called upon the, by a court to uh, go through records and give your opinion as to what those records would indicate? That's correct. Okay. How many times have you been appointed by the court to do such work, both in New York and in California? I've never been appointed in New York, and so all the appointments are in California, and I think we're up to over two dozen now. I don't, I don't remember. I don't keep track of it every day. Okay. So, and do, is it, uh, do you also have another, uh, do you also have a law degree? I do. I have an. I have a degree from Concord Law School, which is part of Purdue University, and it's an executive juris doctorate. Okay. Is that different than a juris doctorate? Well, it, I I thought of, talk about it as a JD Light. Um, okay. So, okay. I I'm not eligible to sit for the bar, but I but it helps me understand um, what's going on when lawyers talk to me. Okay. So. Um, were you uh, retained by uh, Mr. McGee? and myself to do work in this case regarding, uh, regarding this case. Yes. And specifically, what was, uh, as you understood it, your job that, that, we, uh, that you were uh, retained to do? Um, my understanding um, back in uh, July of 16, I think, is when, this, uh, when I was appointed, um, was that I would be examining um, the financial records from uh, certain parties um, to this uh, trial um, to determine um, if essentially what the relationship was from a financial perspective. Did they um, were there gains and losses? Um, were there did they have a stake in this? That sort of thing. Um, and we received um, what felt like a truckload of uh, data. Um, both digitally and in paper, and um, that's how we got started, was just looking at financial records. And would you say that the flow of financial records was something that happened on one date, or did it continue over a period of time? Well, it's continued um, off and on during that time because we had to wait for documents for... Um, we, would find, we would discover, as we often do, that there were ties to other accounts, um, whether that's bank accounts or PayPal accounts, and we would find that those accounts were necessary, so they would have to be gathered, and so there would be fairly long gaps of no activity and then a, lot, a flurry of activity. And that's continued throughout. Um, we, over the course of the last 10 days, have received significant um, new information to work with just recently. So, Did you recently receive an email and documents from um, another expert on this case? We did. And can you uh, explain what that was? Um, so I believe his name is Brian, um, sent us uh, what we refer to as ledgers. So these are um, 
documents that were that he discovered um, in his examination of the computer that were ledgers of uh, Joseph McStay outlining um, costs and uh, revenue for projects that he worked on with uh, Mr. Merrick. And were, those were not documents that were given to you initially or even throughout the course of two and a half years um, when you talk about all that data that you got. It wasn't a part of that, was it? We had not seen them before. And it wasn't a part of anything that DA produced to us that you recognized, is that correct? Objection, improper speculation. Sustained cause for speculation. It wasn't a part of the discovery uh, that you initially received, is that correct? We had never received it before. Okay. And did that change things uh, in terms of certain calculations? It added um, a significant amount of insight and detail that we've not seen before. Okay. In fact, I came to your office yesterday and I met with you regarding some of those changes or things that are, whatever you want to call them, add additions to your analysis. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. And uh, you produced some tables. And, and spreadsheets based on that new data. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Now, was one of the issues that you were asked to do is determine whether or not there was a debt owing from Chase Merritt to Joseph McStay? During the course of this, yes. That was a request. And that's a simplified question because there's a lot that goes into that, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. And were those ledgers helpful in, uh, in, in your opinion, in giving an opinion as to that question? Uh, they were very helpful because up until that point, we really didn't have uh, sufficient information to answer that question. Okay. Uh, and let me just backtrack a little because I know it's going to come up on cross. Do you bill for your time? Do you get paid? Yes. And did you, do you bill for your time on this case? Yes. Okay. Do you know how much you've billed so far since, I guess, July 2016? Um, I, I don't keep those records in my head, so we looked it up, and I think we're at about $31,000 that I've been paid so far. Um, and then there would be uh, additional billings uh, when we're done here um, to cover the almost year since we've been paid. Okay. Um, and so that, that covers a period from July of 2016, is that correct? That's correct. All right. And do you know anything, oh wait, have you ever seen some cameras following me around? Um, I hadn't until yesterday, okay. other than in the courtroom. Okay. And so uh, have you ever been interviewed by a documentary person? No. Um, but you, did you see a, 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 maybe a person with a camera following me around even when I came to your office? Yes. Okay. Do you get paid for any documentary work that you know of? Not that I know of. Okay. Um, back to the question uh, regarding the debt. So um, I'm going to show you and I'm going to show you what's been previously marked and identified by Brian LaRock from Aluma. Is that the person that you were talking about that sent you the email? Yes. Oh, by the way, do you recall when he sent you the email? Um, I, I have a copy of it, so I don't have to rely on recall, but it's April the 13th is when he sent that. Okay. And... What's been, I'm going to show you, I'm going to put up on the screen what's been marked as 1028, exhibit 1028. Is that correct? I do. 
And this would be, if you could just describe to the jury, when you looked at this, what this uh, entails. Well, there are, there are multiple parts to this, um, and so I'll deal with what's here at the top. Um, so we, and I don't, I'll just sh uh, talk about what this is across the line. So we have a date first, we have a client, so that we have a project name, and we have a job total. That would be the total amount that would be invoiced for that job. Um, and then Joseph would allocate part of that um, revenue to Chase as Chase's dollars, and then he would track payment to Chase of those um, amounts due. Now, the, the, this yellow column that we see that we see on the left side of the document, along that, if we can just scroll up a little, does that give a list of the jobs for 2007? So this is a, this is a, jo a list of the jobs uh, in 2007 that Chase Merritt participated in. This is, um, as far as I know, not a complete list of all jobs that were done by EIP, but it was those jobs, those custom jobs that he participated in. And so the job total would be 330,375.97. That's that correct. correct. And, and then, I, I'm sorry, but I, the, I, the reason I know that this isn't all the jobs is because um, their reven, the revenue is reported on uh, their tax return at a higher amount than that. Okay. And then, uh, and then it has Chase's amount or Chase's money in that second column, and that was 204,666.98. Is that correct? In total, correct. Okay. Now, I, I, I'm, it's very difficult for the jury to see this because of the lighting situation, but if you have a pointer there, if you could just uh, go to that section and uh, perhaps, yeah, if you don't mind, and just point to where you're, uh, where you're focusing your testimony on. And maybe if we blow it up, there might, might be more visible or they can look at, or the jury can look at some of the other uh, monitors. That's, yeah, that's a little better. Yeah, clear on the other monitors. Yes. Uh, so we see these numbers uh, that we just talked that you just talked about. Um, uh, Chase's Chase's share or Chase's money would be two hundred four thousand six 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 point ninety eight. Correct. That's correct. As a share of the revenue associated with those projects. Okay. Now underneath those totals, we have different amounts. It looks like um, like so the first one, the first entry there looks like June twenty first two thousand seven, and there's a series of uh, amounts and so forth. Were you able to determine what those represented through your examination? So this is a list um, not in total chronological order. There's a date where he accumulates all of these. When you say he, who are you talking I'm about? I'm talking to the, um, Joseph McStay is the creator of this. Um, it came to us as from him. The, uh, and so what we have is we have totals that were paid that's the $7,500, and then we have amounts that make up that $7,500. And do those represent checks that were issued to a particular person? It could be um, both uh, checks and or cash. Objection, okay. speculation. Overall answer. So would they be checks issued? Uh, I guess my question is, are those checks issued that are charged to Chase's account? as opposed to another, you said that there was other jobs they did. Sure. So, yes, this is, these um, amounts accumulate <coughs> as payments to Chase against his share. So if we scrolled back up, okay. so you can just pick a line across, so the one that's at the top on my screen says $19,000 was the uh, revenue for the job, Chase's share was 12500 and then it represents, pay, there are a list of payments that accumulate. If you could just um, use your pointer and then if I could maybe blow it up again to... So I'm, I'm looking at this line here, so this is revenue, this is Chase's share of that revenue, and then um, he has these payments coming in and at, at the top it shows payments one, two, three, and four um, as payments to um, satisfy the amount due of 12500 So using that line, if I understand you correctly, 
for that particular job, the total job was $19,000. Is that correct. correct? That's correct. Chase's share would be $12,500. Is that correct? That's correct. And then to make up that $12,500, Joseph would issue a series of checks to Chase, which we see in the columns next to it. Is that correct? That's correct. So if we add up those four columns, if you have your pointer, uh, those four columns would then add up to 12,500. That's correct, and um, this uh, zero here represents a balance due, so when that, when that hits zero, then there's no more due to chase. Okay, and then the individual amounts, so we see payments to chase, all of that is, is uh, represented on these amounts that you identified below, is that correct? That's correct. This, and this was a listing of um, what uh, Joseph was keeping a tally um, of what he needed to fill this spreadsheet out. Um, yeah, that's certainly our take on what this spreadsheet meant. Objection and speculation. The, uh, and um, so you'll see when, when we um, look at f um, further years that he went through this and tallied the year, came to a conclusion that in this instance, seven, at the end of that year, that there was nothing due. Um, and so that everything that he had owed Chase on these jobs had been paid to Chase. Was it your understanding that, in reviewing the records, that uh, customers for custom jobs would pay in a certain way? Yes. How was that? So the uh, invoices were issued um, and 50% down was a standard that, um, from all the records that we reviewed, 50% down was standard payment. And upon that payment, then Joseph would um, begin to pay uh, Chase for the work because the work did not begin until that 50% deposit had been made. And in reviewing the records from 2007 and beyond, would you say that there's... I would say, I don't want to say hundreds, but several dozens and dozens of checks issued to Chase Merritt for varying amounts. Yes, there are a lot of checks issued. Okay. That was a pretty common, uh, that was very common for you to see tra uh, checks issued to Chase, is that correct? Certainly there was, there were plenty of checks issued to Chase. Okay. Um, if we go to exhibit uh, 1029, does this look like the same type of uh, uh, spreadsheet? And this is one of the documents you got from uh, Brian LaRock from Iluma, is that correct? It is. And is this a similar type of ledger? It's. It appears to be exactly the same kind of ledger. It's the next year. Okay. And again, we show the total uh, job total for that year, uh, 342,099. That's correct. And Chase's share would be 224,615. That's correct. And again, we, we would have the series of um, payments underneath that that would reflect uh, the payments that were made to Chase on each individual job. That's correct. Okay. Were you able to reconcile uh, 2007 and 2008? Um, if by reconcile you mean did we determine that there was zero due at the end? Is, um, is that what you mean by reconcile? Correct. Um, actually, there was... Um, th these came to us as PDFs and not as... Um, Excel files, um, but we actually converted them for our purpose and examination and into Excel sheets. And th there was um, $200 out of balance in 07 that was corrected in 08. By the end of 08, everything had come together. Okay. And what was the discrepancy in 07 dollar amount wise? $200, I believe. I'm sorry? I believe it was $200. Okay. Um, and so. Is this, it, does this uh, ledger try to capture a 
uh, moment in time, or is this done at the end of the year, or is this done on an ongoing basis throughout the year? Jackson yes. calls for speculation. Well, do you know? I, I don't know um, how often it was updated. Okay. The representations in the ledger, do they reflect various time periods? So, for example, if we go to, we're looking at Exhibit 1029, uh, perhaps we could maybe blow up so we could see what we have on the screen. Um, and uh, if we go to, let's say, August 15, 2008, do you see that date? I do. Are you able to point to it for the jury? So we're talking here. Okay. 9-15. Uh, 915 or, or uh, we'll do September 15th. Is that what you're on? Uh, that's what I'm on. If you said something different, I apologize. That's fine. If, if we use 915 and I, uh, let's say it's actually 915, 2008. So September 15, 2008. And we cut it off there. Would it be your opinion that there could be an amount due to Chase or an amount owed by Chase at that given time? Um, yes, that amount varies um, <coughs> nearly by day. Okay. Can you explain that to the jury, how it fluctuated from Chase owing money to Chase being owed money by Joseph? Um, this was a project-based business. The custom business is a project business, and the payments came in uh, in in lumps, if you will. So 50% of a project would come in and the spending for that project didn't begin until after that 50% deposit had been made. Um, spending was continuing on projects that had already been paid. So you could have pay payments in a month or two or more in advance and that money would be used um, and may be used up, it may still have a balance um, available and then another amount comes in and when that amount comes in um, it changes this math of what's what's owed back and forth okay and it really isn't until the end of the year or the end of the until they stop working with each other that you could actually give an account of where they stand is that in, in terms of finality it certainly, as long as the work continued, you would always have that variance that was available um, based on date and timing of receipts and payments. Would it be accurate to say that at any given time in the year 2008, or any year for that matter, picking any date you want, there could be an amount owing to Chase or an amount overpaid to Chase, which means an amount owing to Joseph? That's correct. Okay. Now, for 2008, you, you indicated that it zeroed out. Is that correct? Yes. And that means that Chase was paid all that was due to him. Is that correct? Yes. And Joseph received all of his payments. And does it also mean anything else? Objection, Lee. <clears throat> well, okay. let me ask you. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I... I'll try to answer the question as I understand it. I, I want to make sure that we we don't think that this um, this zero right here happened on the last day of the year. So these um, schedules would be updated into the following year. And as it was updated and these jobs were completed, this would come to a zero. Okay. So um, payments and expenses would accrue over time against these jobs, um, but the date that's on the left side, so this date, 12108, is a booking date um, or a receipt date um, of the, when the money is coming in, and not a date that um, corresponds to the last nail driven or the, the last work done. If Chase Merritt um, let me ask you this. Was it your understanding that Chase Merritt was an employee, or did he have some other type of relationship with Joseph? Jackson Box Foundation. Mm -hmm. Were you able to review, uh, based on um, 
the records uh, as to these ledgers, what the relationship was between uh, uh, Mr. Merritt and Mr. McStay. Objection, last foundation. Okay. Um, what type of corporate formation or company formation uh, was Earth Inspired Products? Objection, last foundation. Point, sure. You reviewed uh, uh, Joseph's tax returns? I did. For what years? 2007 and 2008. Did Joseph provide schedules for his Earth Inspired Products um, work? In the 1040, the personal tax return, there is a Schedule C, which is where you report sole proprietor business. And he had a Schedule C in his 1040 for both of those years. And what would that indicate to you as to the type of company it was? So we refer to those as sole proprietor. So there was is a single owner. And it's not a corporation or a limited liability company or a partnership or other um, legal entity of a company. It is um, known as a fictitious business name or a DBA, so doing business as. Those are registered with the county and not with the state. Okay. And did uh, Joseph, on his tax returns, report any employees that worked uh, for his sole proprietorship? He did not. Okay. Did you see checks that were issued to Chase Merritt when you reviewed the records? Yes. Did you review checks that were issued to iDesign? Yes. And did you also review checks and records that indicated iDesign was associated with Chase Merritt? Yes. Objection, Lax Foundation. So based on the review of your records, were you able to determine what relationship existed between Chase, iDesign, and Earth-inspired products? Objection, Lax Foundation. Was it your... In looking at these, there was money due to uh, Chase in the second column, is that correct? Yes. And the money was, uh, at least according to this ledger, it looks like the money was paid. It looks like all the zeros were there uh, on the right side, is that correct? Correct. And this is 2008, right? That's correct. All right. So, in um, 2008, if we, if um, there were let's say there was uh, any money owing from uh, Chase to Joseph. Would that be reflected on this ledger? Objection, Lax Foundation. Calls for speculation. So if we go to the, page, the second page of this okay. schedule. Keep going. We'll stop right there. So... On 11-7-2008, you'll see a, a reference here, paid through here. Um, you, it's, oh, if now you can see the whole thing. If you don't says, mind just reading the whole, uh, if you, because uh, I can't see it too well. Paid through here on spreadsheet. The low line isn't reflected on spreadsheet yet. Okay. Um, which was the, uh, my um, rationale for my statement previous that said that this was not all done at the same time. Um, and, it, and it's not done daily. Um, so the, he would catch up with this from time to time. Okay. And then the amounts below that line, what would, in your opinion, what would those reflect? So that reflects spending. Um, the, these are um, spending. This is going to, these amounts will end up in some point on the columns of payment one, two, three, or four um, on a spreadsheet. But this would suggest that those are going to end up on a different spreadsheet because here it says paid through here on the spreadsheet and the spreadsheet is at zero. Okay. Now, um, on that same page, there's a, made, there's a reference to, um, it looks like it's on somewhere around December 2nd or somewhere around there, if you don't mind looking at that. It, there's a reference to uh, a Provecho disaster. You see that? I do. And if you don't mind just pointing that out. Uh, 
this is this is the disaster that you're referring to. And in a, next to it is an amount of thirty-four thousand. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Now, if we go back to the first page. Did you see on that list of jobs whether there was a Provecho job that was uh, accounted for on the 2008 ledger? If you look at May 2nd. Um, yes. Okay, so if we go back to the first page. So this is the date and the the name here, Provecho. Okay, so it says Laurel, and then next to it it says Provecho, R-E-S-T, correct? Yes. Okay, and that job total, at least on this ledger, is 29720 is that correct? That's correct. And Chase's share would be 19500 is that correct? That's correct. And he received a series of three payments, correct? That's correct. Okay. And uh, if you don't mind, just I, I apologize for making you turn around, but uh, if you could just uh, show that. So these are the three payments that you're referring to. Fourteen sixty-three, and then a pay, and then a payment of ten thousand. And eight zero three seven. Eight zero three seven. Okay, and so those equal the nineteen thousand five hundred, correct? Correct. So does that does this represent to you when Chase has a zero? Does that represent to you that Chase has been fully paid? Objection. Lax Foundation cost for speculation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I believe that represents that he's been paid the 19.5, which is shown here, is what he was owed. Okay. And does this also represent that the job was completed? Objection. Okay. Speculation. Lax Foundation. <coughs> so, um, yes, I don't believe that the final payments were made until. Um, the job had been completed. Okay. Because you had mentioned earlier there's a 50% deposit and then a 50% upon completion. That's correct. Okay. So if Chase is fully paid, that would uh, lend to your opinion that the job was completed? Yes. Okay. Um, so in the, at least for Provecho, he got paid the 19500 meaning Chase, and he completed the job, at least according to this schedule. Is that correct? Objection. Speculation lacks foundation. Yes. Okay. So, if there's an amount, well, let me, um, let's go to exhibit 1033. You recognize this? I do. This is 2009's ledger. And let's see. Um, now, while we look at this one, I want to also talk to you about Exhibit 419. And I'm going to, it's been referred to as the email from Joseph to. Chase Merritt. Do you know what I'm talking about? I do. Okay. So we're going to go back to 1033 in a moment, but I just want to uh, uh, put this up for a moment. Okay. Do you, you recognize this document? I do. And if you could, before we go back to exhibit 1033, can you... Um, Describe for the jury what this uh, email represents. So there, there are two jobs referenced here at the beginning. Uh, there's no salutation, so we just jump right into business here. This is for Paul Mitchell and for Saudi Arabia, two abbreviations that are used throughout. Um, the 15% represents the percentage that is um, owed to Chase for this job. Objection, speculation. Um, 
the 15% is, is calculated as 4725 and then there's an additional amount labeled savings and a total of 7775 for that job. For Saudi Arabia, we go through the same exercise, the 15% is 7725. The savings are listed at 6500. There's also an installation fee for the Saudi job and the total then that would be due would be 18225 and a total of $26,000. Do you mind if I just stop you right there? Is it your understanding, all right, let me ask you this. Did this, these, um, these two jobs make their way to a spreadsheet that we have looked at so far, either 2007, 2008, or 2009? They did not. Okay. And you have previously talked about at any given time there could be money owing to Chase or money owing to Joseph, correct? That's correct. All right. So since this didn't, this twenty-six thousand dollars has not been reflected on a spreadsheet as of the three spreadsheets that you looked at, two thousand seven, eight, and nine, um, it would just. How do you explain that? How do you explain that it's not on a spreadsheet yet? Well, the spreadsheet's not complete. Objection, speculation. In other words, two thousand ten never got to get done. Is that correct? That's correct. Does that change the fact that that $26,000 is owed to Chase? The trigger for um, being owed would be the collection of the 50% down payment. Okay. Um, and so that would be how you would determine whether it, was, whether it was owed in advance of seeing it on a spreadsheet. And as of February 1st, when this email was written, the 50% for both of those jobs had been received. Is that correct? Um, that's correct. Okay. Now, there's an amount uh, below that. There's three lines there. It says Chase paid, Chase owed, and overpaid. You see that? I do. Can you uh, explain to the jury what that represents? So this is as of the date of this email. Um, Chase was paid 173 through that date. Um, Chase had been owed 158, and the difference would have been an overpaid amount of $15,045. If Joseph ever got around to doing his spreadsheet, let's say in February... calls for speculation. Well, I haven't heard the whole question yet. This is a, this is a, sounds like it might be well, this is a hypothetical. If a spreadsheet were done, let's say, at the end of February, would, would and this amount was included, the $26,000, would there be a change in the amount owing or overpaid to Chase? Objection, speculation. Incomplete hypothetical. If we added the $26,000 to the <coughs> spreadsheet, or forget about the spreadsheet, if we added the $26,000 that was owing to Chase as of February 1st, what would the amount be uh, in terms of whether or not Chase was owed money or owed money to Joseph? Same objections. So the difference between those two sums is ten thousand nine fifty-five. That would be an amount owing to Chase. That would be an amount owing to Chase but under, then we, under that circumstance. But then we have these two lines below it, which indicate Levine and Provecho. Correct. Okay. Um, do you know Do you know what that ref, what those references are to? The um, first one. The, Actually, it's the second one on this list. Provecho, we've already talked about. Um, there was a reference to a disaster. Okay. Um, Levine is also a job, um, another job that was um, in the 2007 ledger. Okay. Um, uh, an eight thousand dollar job, seven thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollar job. And was that were those two amounts? Were, remember, we saw the payments made to Chase, and then we have a zero at the end. Yes. Were those two jobs? Paid fully to Chase? Uh, both the Levine job and the Provento job had been fully paid to Chase. And then, that means based on your opinion, as you said earlier, Chase finished that job. Those jobs were finished, correct? Correction Objection. calls for speculation and hearsay. Let me ask you this. Why are these, do you have an opinion as to why these amounts would be added at the end here? We see 8,800, and we see 19,000. Objection, my, it, speculation. 
for the world to come out for their opinion. Yeah, it's, it's my opinion that these are jobs that there are claims that exist. Um, so the customer is making a claim against Earth Inspired products for something involving the um, uh, installation, the workmanship, the final product. And so they've been listed here as um, claims, but there has been no demand for payment made. On, on the 2007 spreadsheet or the 2008 spreadsheet, did Joseph have an entry that changed the calculations of what was owed to Chase or from Chase? Uh, no, any reference to these two jobs is off to the side. It's not in the body of the spreadsheet itself. Is there a term that accountants use for items that are not actually um, in the ledgers? Um, we, we talk about things being off book if they're not part of the official books of the company. Um, these are not official books of the company, but uh, the same time the term would apply. Okay. Do these two amounts represent a true amount, an actual debt owed by Chase to Joseph based on your review of the records? Objection, speculation, lacks foundation. So it would be my opinion that um, Chase would be liable for up to the amount that he'd been paid for these jobs as an independent contractor. And um, on the, Le the Levine job, he had been paid $5,400. So I, I believe it would be limited to that. On the Provetro job, he was actually paid $19,500. And I think that nineteen should be nineteen five. dollars So in other words, if let's say you said it about a claim. These two jobs had claims. If Joseph were successful and he were able to retrieve that money from wherever, then there would be no amount further owing by Chase. Is that correct? That would be correct. If Joseph wasn't able to recover it for whatever reason, then there would be a, an amount owed by, by Chase to Joseph. Is that correct? I believe that would be accurate, and um, it would be my opinion that it would be limited to what he what he had been paid for that job. As of February 1st, 2010, the date of this uh, email, were you able to determine whether either of those jobs, uh, those claims to those jobs, had been finalized? We, we were not able to find any final claims or any final settlement or any demand for payment. Were you able to find documentation regarding either one of those claims? Um, we've seen documentation uh, on the Provetro uh, job. Okay. And in your review of those records, did, did it indicate to you that that was an ongoing issue, or was that finalized? No, it was a continuing issue um, through PayPal, which is where the, the payment vehicle had been made. Okay. Did you see any demand well, for... Let me interrupt you at this point. It's about noon, so we'll go ahead and take our... In recess at this time, 1.30, hopefully we'll get the light situation resolved and uh, have that working properly uh, by the time we get back at 1.30. Keep in mind the admonitions previously given to you not to form or express any opinions about the case, not to discuss the case, and we'll see everyone back at 1.30. Yeah, okay.